Hi, just wanted to do a short video today on the turbocharger and how it functions. Here is a 3D model of a four stroke diesel engine. And on the back here, we have a turbocharger. Once you've been working around engineering a while and around engines, you'll get to notice what the turbocharger looks like. You will just start to recognize it. It does have quite a unique shape on I mean, both sides around this area here this is the whole turbocharger assembly and it looks a little bit like a snail it comes around this side and on the opposite side you have the same thing like that it's actually connected to the exhaust system and the air system so what we'll do we'll back out now and we'll go and have a look at a turbocharger model so the model is now loaded we'll just pause that a second and we can explode it okay that is as a turbocharger would look when it's exploded now it all looks very complicated but the concept is very simple so what I want to do is just assemble it this is only a short video so we're not going to talk in depth about every single part but I want to draw your attention to these bits here the first bit is this fan it looks a bit like a fan it isn't actually a fan it's actually a compressor and what's happening is it's drawing air in to the middle here roughly where this nut is then it's discharging air at a higher pressure from here so we're drawing air in to this hole and we're discharging air out of this hole and the pressure coming out is higher than the pressure going in and this is why the compressor is called a compressor because it increases the pressure now if we go to the opposite side here we have a slightly different arrangement it looks quite similar but it is different this here is a turbine and what's happening is exhaust gas from the engine from the combustion space is entering here it's going in here it's entering the casing it's coming around inside the casing and it's coming past this turbine and the turbine is rotating or it's starting to rotate because the exhaust gas is coming past it so in other words no exhaust gas no rotation but if there is exhaust gas coming out of the engine it's going to cause the turbine to rotate and what's interesting here is the turbine is on the same shaft as the compressor if you look here just imagine it turbines there and it's going to have a straight shaft all the way through to the compressor wheel on the other side so they're all on the same shaft now why would you want to connect a turbine and a compressor now remember this whole assembly is called a turbocharger what why would you want to do that why would you want to use exhaust gas to rotate a turbine and then drive a compressor and there are even two separate systems this is air and this here is exhaust gas well let's have a look at the turbocharger system and then we can explain exactly what's going on and why okay so the model's loaded now what are we looking at here it all seems to have got very complicated very quickly but we can see here here is our turbocharger again it's the same as it was before we're looking at it from above so we've got an air side here there's our compressor again it's still there this is the air side if we go over to the opposite side and here we have a turbine so it's the same setup and if we go back on this side we're going to walk through the whole process now so look at the blue arrow here it's going into the compressor so what's happened is air is being drawn into the compressor it's being drawn in because the compressor is rotating and it's creating a negative pressure so the air is being drawn in and then the air pressure is increased as it's thrown out to the side in this casing which they call a volute casing so the centrifugal force throws the air out to the side and then it comes around here and now the air pressure is higher than when it entered the compressor so keep that in mind the pressure is now higher and then it's going to go down through here this is called a charge air manifold and it's going to go to this funky looking piece of equipment here now what's this this is a air cooler or a charge air cooler the reason we need this is because we need to cool the air down and we're going to explain why in a moment 
but we cool the air down and then it comes through here out here and into the cylinder liner so there we go down there let's have a look a second if these valves open these two then the air is going to rush in to the combustion space or the cylinder liner so what's going to happen here now the air is going to get drawn in through these two valves as the piston goes down and as the piston comes up there's going to be an explosion and then it's going to go down again and then it's going to go up and the exhaust gas is going to be expelled now so a few strokes ago it came in here and was air and now it's being expelled through these two valves as exhaust gas so it's a mixture of burnt fuel and used up air where well, you could argue it's air where the oxygen has been burnt so it is now coming out here out here through the exhaust gas manifold and what I'm going to do I'm just going to turn it around slightly here because I seem to be backing into a lot of pieces and we'll follow that so exhaust gas through here through here down there down there and back in to the turbocharger but this time we're not going to the compressor we're going to the turbine and you can see here's the turbine the exhaust gas comes in goes around the casing and is expelled through the center hole so why we want to do that let's explain that now we've seen the whole setup and I think what we'll do we'll go back here and we'll say right we're drawing air in we need air for combustion but what would happen if we drew more air into the combustion space well there's a few things that would happen if we increase the pressure we actually increase the amount of oxygen in the combustion space the air mass has been increased there's actually more oxygen within the combustion space than there would normally be under ambient air conditions now this is very important because if we have more oxygen we can add more fuel and this mixture of fuel and oxygen can be burnt efficiently let's just say theoretically we can release one kilowatt of power if we're using ambient air if we increase the pressure of the air so that it contains more oxygen then we can actually burn more fuel now this makes sense this is a simple fire triangle if you look at the fire triangle similar to one we use in the four stroke video you see that fuel and oxygen have a relationship and ideally if you have a good ratio between the two you can have an explosion or a fire efficiently if we are accelerating along a motorway and we put our foot down on the accelerator we'll be injecting more fuel into the engine but if there's no turbocharger we're not supplying more air we're actually just injecting more fuel and if it burns all efficiently then we'll release more power but if it doesn't all burn efficiently then we're not releasing as much power as we should be in fact we're actually wasting fuel so the prime reason why we would install a turbocharger is to increase the efficiency of the engine and also to allow you to release a lot more power from the engine than would normally be possible if you are only drawing in ambient air so we compress the air using the compressor that's on this this side of the turbocharger and then it comes out and it will go into this air cooler the reason we cool the air down is because the air will be in excess of 100 degrees after the turbocharger compressor so what we want to do is cool it back down again we need to cool it back down because hot air is less dense than cool air if you think about it this makes sense a hot air balloon rises what we actually want is dense air we want air with a high oxygen content so we need it with a lower temperature and that's what the air cooler does it cools it back down again and it'll come out it'll go into the combustion space we'll get more power out now because we can inject more fuel because we've got more oxygen and that means we can burn more fuel efficiently now the exhaust gas comes out and it will go to the turbine side of the turbocharger and that causes the turbine to rotate you might have already noticed that if the turbine is not rotating then the compressor is not rotating and if the compressor is not rotating then you can't compress any air which means you can't burn any more fuel or not efficiently anyway so it's important to realize that this is a feedback loop the more exhaust gas you can supply to the turbine the faster the air compressor will turn and the faster the air compressor turns 
the more air you can supply to the combustion space. And the more fuel that is added and the more fuel that is burnt efficiently, the more exhaust gas will go to the turbine. If you've ever heard the phrase turbo lag, you'll actually know that a turbo lag is where you try to accelerate very quickly, but unfortunately the turbine doesn't rotate or does not increase speed at the same rate. The reason for that is it does not have a large amount of exhaust gas coming to it. And with a turbo lag, you'll be injecting more fuel into the combustion space, but it will take a while before the exhaust gas goes to the turbine turbocharger. When it does go to the turbine turbocharger, you'll suddenly get a massive increase in power output. And this is what's known as turbo lag because the amount of power you're getting out of the engine is slightly delayed because the turbine does not start turning until a second or two seconds after you initially put your foot down on the accelerator. And that is essentially how a turbocharger works. There's a bit of a feedback loop, but using this very simple system of compressing air and using waste gas to compress the air, you're saving a lot of energy. The exhaust gas is not going to be used for anything useful normally. But if you install a turbocharger, you can actually use it for something very useful. You can use it for compressing air. This means you get a much higher power output from the engine, but the weight added to the engine is very low. You only need to install this turbocharger, and the turbocharger might be 5% of the engine's weight or less. But the amount of power released might be in excess of 25, 30, 40%. So this is a very good investment if you want to keep the weight of the engine low and you want to increase the power output. You'll also see turbocharger concepts for combustion turbines. In a combustion turbine, you'll actually compress the air going in and the speed and the pressures that you can obtain are directly related to the gas turbine at the opposite end. So essentially, it's a massive turbocharger. At some point, we hope to do a video about that as well. Anyway, I hope that gives you a brief overview of a turbocharger, what it is and how it works. And hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we're actually going to release a turbocharger advanced video explaining a bit more about the components, why they're designed the way they are, and what it is they do from a thermodynamics perspective. Thank you very much for your time.